Thank you, everyone. Before coming to the US, this is my first time. My dad told me, please shave your beard <laughs> because you're going to get randomly searched. So, <laughs> so while, uh, while I was here in the plane, I imagined what would happen when I'd be in that room being questioned. And I imagined I'd be presenting my project to them. And uh, it would start with the slide with all of these institutions. And then they would see Occupy Movement. And then they'd see the Arab Revolution. And they, they look at my beard. They make the connections. And it will go downhill from there. <laughs> But actually, the reason why there's this slide is to tell you and to tell them that we rely heavily on big institutions to make things better, to make better products, better services, better healthcare, better possibilities for everyone. And the past few years really showed us beautifully what happens when some institutions fail. If you look at the Occupy movements all across the world, or if you look at the Arab revolutions, people are speaking up. People People are self-organizing, people are motivating each other, and they are creating change. Why? Because their institutions failed to generally listen to them. Their institutions failed to make the things that matter better. So at Project Better, we believe in empowering communities to make things better, to speak up for the better. We empower the silent heroes who might just change everything. Because you can create a space for you and your community to speak up for the better, to share ideas, to tap into the collective thinking of your community, and to take your ideas into action. So let me show you how. Um, there's a place in London called Barking. Now, Barking is a place with challenges. And uh, I worked with the council. And I told them to put a blackboard. And I said, I'll, I'll stencil it with a simple sentence, Barking would be better if a line. That's it. Now, it took me a long time to do it. And this is a complete stranger. It's, he's called Muhammad. It took us two hours to make it. And it took one hour for people to fill it up with their ideas. Here, you see people talking about their ideas. Some are funny. Some are really engaging. And when uh, somebody from the council actually came, he's uh, Gary Jones. He's a manager. We looked at all of the ideas. And there's something really remarkable. A lot of people were saying, barking would be better if you kept our market. Now, I know nothing about barking. But it turns out there's an outdoor market that there's a big debate about it. They want to put it in a, an indoor space. So people from the community wanted it to stay exactly where it is, exactly the way it is. And uh, you see here the manager going up, and he's, he's writing, it is staying. And actually, it will stay. So this is an example of how you can take a big conversation across a whole community and resolve it in public. So people from the council came up to me and they said, they've been trying to do this forever. They hire people, they make questionnaires, they stop people in their tracks and say, one second, can you answer these questions? We want to make barking a little bit better. And people don't usually stop in their tracks because they think they want their money or it's un unaccessible. So he said, for the first time, people are coming to us to share their ideas motivated to share deep thoughts, and they get to use chalk. <laughs> well, Gary Jones from Barking doesn't need me to set up that installation. Because if he goes to the website, he gets everything he needs to do it. And a lot of people already did. This is a, a Project Better Space in New York. This is one in a bathroom. And I have no idea how it got into a bathroom. <laughs> and this is one I did in, in Beirut. And it shows you how scalable this concept is. You can make it big for a big community in public with chalk, or it can be small for a small community. So imagine the way we treat our patients would be better if it could be in a small office for doctors and nurses to start a conversation about what matters to, the, to their patients. This is the first ever Project Better Space ever made. We just celebrated its first year anniversary last month. And I just want to walk you through some of the ideas that have been said. Here somebody said, um, racism against Palestinians and migrant workers shouldn't be there anymore. And you see the anti-racism movement working on that. Here, people are saying, uh, Lebanon would be better if I get a civil marriage. I have a civil marriage. And there's an NGO that has been working on that for a while. Some people are saying they want parks. And then there's the Beirut Green Project working on that for a while. So that's why there's this 
I hope you saw the pattern here. But there's a big, <laughs> there's a big potential in connecting people who really care deeply about their ideas to the people who are passionately working on making them happen. So that's why we've developed a platform that is today available for everyone to create a space where people can share their ideas for the better about any conversation. So you can start one about our future, about toothbrushes, <laughs> about our customer service if you're a small business. And you can get really quickly and intuitively what your community cares about. So all of this is available on the Project Better website. Now I want to show you an example of how the Project Better inspired action. We developed and prototyped an app that does exactly this. You take a picture about something you want to make better, you take an idea, and it all goes up on a map that is open and free for everyone. And you can actually zoom in, and you can see the ideas, you can see what that person actually was thinking and what he saw, and what does he really, really mean. So we did one in Barking, and I asked, uh, asked people to go through the street and to do what I just told you. And this is one of the pictures. Now, a designer from Centro St. Martins used the map, and he zoomed into Brick Lane, he saw all of these, all of these ideas, and uh, he told me, Sharif, there is a solution here. You know, there are a lot of garbage bins. But the problem is, when a lot of people go there on Sunday, the place is called Brick Lane, it's very famous on Sunday for its markets and food and vintage shops. Although there are a lot of garbage bins, the garbage bins get filled up really quickly, and people end up throwing garbage on the street. So he said, I have a solution, and I think I can do it. So he made this. He made a recycling bin because there are no recycling bins. He made a recycling bin that is lightweight, flexible, easy to empty, and costs nothing to make. It's made out of a recycled, I mean, upcycled water bottles. Now, when I went to see it, this is what I saw. I saw people taking pictures of it, taking pictures next to the recycling bin. <laughs> and I've never seen anyone take a picture next to the recycling bin before. <laughs> so what I really want to show you is that the possibilities of what happens when you put all of these ideas for free for everybody, openly and very accessible. Imagine the stimulation for innovators and inventors. Imagine the inspiration for entrepreneurs. Imagine the silent heroes who might just change everything. Now, I don't know if you can still rely on big institutions in the same way, and I don't know how to make the world a better place. But I think, together, maybe we can. Thank you.